wanted to get your thoughts on this. WWE announced this the other day. They're calling it their WWE ID program. It's to the uh, to support indie wrestling development. That's what they're saying. So, in the press release they put out the other day, just to kind of sum up exactly what this is, they're saying, and I quote, it's constructed to support independent wrestling prospects in wrestling schools with uh, world-class training, development, and mentorship. They also said it's set to provide prominent independent wrestling schools with the WWE ID official designation with the goal of providing new trainees and existing talent at these select institutions with enhanced developmental opportunities. And they said that it includes uh, Booker T's Reality of Wrestling in Houston, Cody Rhodes' Nightmare Factory in Atlanta, which is notable because it actually kind of used to be the feeder system for AEW, but now they're working with WWE, obviously, because Cody Rhodes is there. Uh, Seth Rollins' is Black and Brave Academy in Davenport, Iowa. Elite Pro Wrestling Training Center in Concord, New Hampshire. And the Knox X, or whatever it's called, Pro Academy in Los Angeles. So, uh, a lot of people were kind of blown up about this on Monday. A lot of, like, overly extreme reactions. A lot of people blowing up about how, how overly great this is. I feel like it kind of falls somewhere in the middle. And kind of before I break down the pros and cons. Just want to get your reaction to the news. And whether you think this is a pro or a con. Or a bit of both for WWE and the pro wrestling industry as a whole. Yeah, I mean, I saw it. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I looked in there more and I was like, oh, it's just like fluffing up the people that already have school and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's a decent idea, but like when all the gyms are basically people who are contract with WWE, it seems a little, like I said, it seems a little fluff job, but I mean, I think it's a decent idea, but I think we're go- I think if these people were going to this school already, I feel like they'd get a better look than most other people, so I'm not overly sure why it's a big deal, but I mean, I think, it, like I said, I think it's a good idea if it was like non-contracted WWE gyms, like, like I said, if someone's going to Seth Rollins school and he thinks they have like the ability or they have a good look, like, I think he just put in a word, like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Same with, like, Booker T, Cody, I feel like, I don't know, it just seems like it's too, it's too in-house. I feel like if it was non-WWE contracted people, then it'd be, it seemed a lot, like, cooler than what this really is. Yeah, no, it, it's interesting because, like, if they're going to these schools, does that mean, and it wasn't really cleared up, and I'm sure we'll get more details in the weeks and days that follow and stuff, but do you think that means that you solely have to have your sights set on going to WWE? Like, what if you think you have a better shot in AEW or a Ring of Honor or a TNA or whatever? Like, do you have to go to WWE? Like, can you work with AEW-bound people and other independent promotions? Like, that was kind of my, among other questions, but one of my main questions, like, is this kind of making it exclusive to work with WWE and there's no other pathway to work with other companies. That's I feel like that could pose a problem if true. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's no real guidelines that were announced, but yeah, now that you said that, I guess like you'd kind of be I guess pigeonholed if you're going to work with WWE. Maybe, like I said, maybe if they're still there. I don't know. It's a great question, though. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it could be strict, too, because if they're... Obviously, they're not just, they're training academies, but like some of these, reality of wrestling is a, uh, they, they host shows and they work with other promotions and, and do other stuff. I just feel like if these people, some of these people have WWE ID contracts, there might be something written in there. And again, I don't know. And maybe we find out at some point, maybe I'm just exaggerating here, but you know, I'm just kind of providing worst case scenario. What if they can't like lose to other people? Like, hey, I'm headed to WWE at some point, so I'm, I can't, I can't be booked to lose. Like, that's not the biggest concern I think that some of these people have, but it is a concern. Like, oh, I'm a WWE ID prospect, so I got to win all my matches, brother. Like, I, I, I th- that doesn't work for me, brother, to be putting other people over before I head to WWE. I feel like that could be a problem too. But again, I could just be exaggerating here. That doesn't actually uh, end up being a thing. Yeah, I mean, I think it all depends on what's going on. I mean, when you're booking these people, maybe, like you said, maybe it's one of those things that they have something in their contract that they can't lose or have to be used in a certain way. So, not quite sure. I think I said, I think in theory it's a good idea. I just wish it wasn't with gyms that already have WWE, like, contract to people. Yeah, and I think it also kind of, the other concern that people have is, is that it, it kind of creates this, if they didn't already have this, a stranglehold on independent wrestling. And some people were kind of relating it to WWE's takeover of the UK indie scene uh, when they started working with Progress and 
Um, not Rev Pro, I don't think, but like other promotions, and then creating NXT UK out of it, which was solely designed to kind of cool down the momentum that UK wrestling had at that point, which they kind of did by taking a lot of their talent, not all of their talent, but a lot of their talent back in 2016, 2017, 2018, Gunther being a part of that uh, wave of talent, and a lot of those people ended up going on to doing bigger and better things on the main roster and whatnot, so it did end up being successful in that respect, but um, you know, a lot of people kind of look at this as WWE's way, and Triple H specifically, because when he was running NXT, it kind of seemed like a lot of the talent he was bringing in for a certain while, like the Adam Coles, the Dijaks, the Leo Rushes, the Bobby Fishes, Kyle O'Reilly's, a lot of Ring of Honor people, uh, when they were kind of on fire, and surely they would have brought in the Elite if they wanted to come in back in 2018, 2019, but they created AEW instead, so they didn't end up coming in. Um, but that was kind of Triple H's way of creating a super indie within his own promotion. And it made for an amazing brand in NXT at the time, you know, classic black and gold. Um, but it did do damage to a lot of promotions that just couldn't compete with WWE. Um, and WWE kind of working with these promotions might, I don't know, create less of a pathway for other companies as well. That, that, that's a lot. Of, I'm just kind of rambling here at this point, but... Um, I don't know, do you feel like this, is it a concern for the future as far as WWE dominating the wrestling scene, or do you think it just might be a whole lot of, again, like I said, exaggeration from some fans, and it's more of a time will tell approach? Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, with the indie stuff, and especially in the UK, I think, I mean, when you're like the big dog, I guess, like, you can kind of make moves that other people don't like, or it seems like you're kind of like monopolizing or taking over the industry, but, I mean, when you're the big fish, I guess that's something you can do, and like I said, yeah. maybe it could hamper the other things, but like I said, I, I think if it was more like, again, non-contracted indie people or indie promotions, and maybe it would seem like they're kind of monopolizing, but they're working with people they already know, so, I mean, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, no, I think for now it might seem like a big deal, just given WWE's track record, I would be skeptical, but I do think it's an overall... You know, it's a bit of both, but I do think it's a positive thing. Because you and I specifically, when WWE first launched that NIL program, they first launched it in 2021, but like when they started having fans back and shit in 2022, uh, we talked to a lot of people from WWE when we were in Nashville a few years ago. And our main question was, like, as cool as that program was, is, and it has undoubtedly been successful. Because I saw someone make a comment the other day saying, oh, after they announced this WWE ID program, someone had said, oh... That just goes to show you the WWE Performance Center around for 10 plus years. It's been a failure, which is why they have to resort and bring in indie people in, which could not be farther from the truth. It took a while to get going. I mean, the Performance Center so far has been a success. I mean, when you have people on the main roster, like a Roman Reigns, for fucking example, on top, among other people, Bianca Belair, um, it certainly has not been a failure. But the NIL program... Braun Breaker, exactly. I mean, the NIL program specifically. You look at the I mean, NIL... I feel like you could name off a ton of people. Connie Jordan, yeah. Chris Williams. I mean, you could go through a, a list of people that went through NIL. Tiffany Stratton. I mean, saying that's a failure, you're just, you're just a hater and just not... No, that's just stupid. That. That, that's just wrong. That's just inaccurate. Um, but like in... you said, we just named five people, and that's just, like, off my head. I could guarantee if you skim through the Ross, you could find plenty of people that are through NIL. No, specifically in... Um, in... NXT right now. Did you mention Trick too? I think I heard you mention Trick. I said Trick, Kalani, yeah. um, Obafemi. Obafemi. Um, I think I like to think Tony D'Angelo was too. But yeah, I think so too. Yeah, Tony. Um, Tony. I mean, I'm not that she's amazing, but like Rizzo, assuming Jada Parker, Lola Vice. I mean, yeah. If you go, like I said, if you skim through the roster, there'd be plenty of people that were through NIL. Oh, yeah. I mean, a majority of the NXT roster right now is from NIL. So, I mean, it definitely has worked out for the better. But I think one of our main questions back then was, like, are you still hiring indie talent? Because there was that edict at one point where, well, we're not going to hire any indie people, which is so fucking stupid. Because you need some of these, you need someone for these green people to work with. Um, and not just the people that you have there at the time already in the roster. You need to be able to hire more indie people. And they have brought in plenty of established talent already. I mean, they just fu- they just fucking signed the Motor City Machine Guns recently, which we'll get to momentarily. Uh, among other people, and you know, they brought people back and whatnot. But you need to be able to hire indie people. Like, Carmelo was not an NIL aspect, or prospect rather. He came from, like, the lower level indies actually up, up here in the Northeast. And he's obviously worked out really well in NXT and the main roster as well. Uh, but you need more people like that, whether they're as experienced as Carmelo Hayes or not. And I think this accomplishes that to kind of get a better 
healthier balance of bringing in athletes with no wrestling experience at all that can be future stars, but also bringing in people that are aspiring to get to WWE that just don't have the real avenue to get there, and now they do. So I think it's a nice balance. No, yeah, I think you need a, a balance. Like you said, you need experienced people for these greenhorns, for lack of better words, yeah, to yeah. work with. So, I mean, you're not going to get better working against other people that don't are still learning or really don't know what they're doing. So you need a little mixture of both. Obviously, some of these people, like a Bianca or a Braun Breaker, like they kind of got it instantly. And I mean, I feel like they never really like they just were like great athletes off the bat. It kind of translated, but some of these people do need experienced people to work with to kind of polish them up. So I think it, you need a little mixture of both. Yeah, and I think a mixture of both if they can kind of find the right balance there and bring in the right people. And it depends who they're bringing and maybe complete unknowns, which you need once in a while, or people that are coming from the, like Javon Evans, for example, I didn't honestly really know who he was. I'm not a GCW guy, but he came from GCW and he's already done really, really well in NXT. Um, and he's someone that uh, as part of like this WWE ID program, I think it really excel. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of shape this takes. Um, hopefully it ends up being more of, of a positive than a negative, but I don't blame people for being skeptical with WWE's track record or this sort of stuff, but I am optimistic for the future.